Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and today I'm going to show you how to compose some piano-driven cinematic music, just like this. This type of music that would fit as underscore in a film or TV drama is heavily inspired by film composers such as Thomas Newman and Harry Gregson Williams. If you want to grab the PDF step-by-step -step walkthrough of the piece, check out the link below in the description. In order to establish a calm tone, I'm going to start with some piano chords as the main focus for the opening. These are going to be using the mid and upper range of the piano, featuring open voicings, meaning that the notes stacked in the chords will be wider spaced or further apart than normal triads. Start by choosing four chords. I've got a C open fifth, which has no middle E or E flat, meaning it's neither major or minor, an A flat open fifth with an added sixth note, B flat major, and then an F open fifth. I've used the open fifth chords to give the music a modal and ambiguous quality, something composers such as Thomas Newman use a lot. Next, I'm going to copy these four chords again, but changing the voicing on the last two chords adding a ninth or the note of C to the B flat major chord and adding an A to the last F chord to make it F major. So already you can see I have a mixture of repetition to provide continuity whilst changing small elements such as a couple of notes to give a sense of development between these two sets of four chords. I'm aiming to turn this first section into four separate phrases, or mini sections, so for the third phrase, I'm going to copy the first four chords I originally had again. To finish this opening section, I'm then going to have two more chords which help to conclude this introduction. An A flat open fifth chord with an added ninth, followed by a B flat open fifth chord with an added ninth again. Adding these ninths is a great way to add some extra emotion to the chords. Now I've got the chords for the piano, I want to use two pianos layered together to form the sound. This original sound from Sound Iron's Emotional Piano, and then I'm going to add the Malms Joe Grand Piano, which helps to add some extra definition to the sound. To add some additional interest in the background, I'm going to next create a simple accompaniment underneath the piano chords. For this style of music, pads, or long sustained soft sounds, work well. I'm using a couple of different pad sounds from Omnisphere, which I've layered together from the beginning, playing one long held sustained note of C. From bars 8 to 13, I bring in different pads, just to keep the sound fresh, along with giving a slightly different sonic quality. There are some amazing pads available in the free labs range from Spitfire Audio, which I definitely recommend that you check out if you don't have something like Omnisphere. Also from bar 8, I bring in these flautando strings from Spitfire Audio's Chamber Strings Library. These are just playing long held sustained notes of C and G, adding like pedal notes over the changing harmony in the piano. Next, to create some movement, I've used this reverse piano patch from Rev by Output, which alternates between the notes of C and G. This effect can easily be achieved without the specific sound from Rev. Check out my video Reversing Piano Sounds to learn how to do this with any piano in a DAW. Finally, I've made use of this mandolin, which is from Spitfire Audio's Free Labs range, to give some added sonic interest. Playing a very simple part is just playing C's as eighth notes or quavers, helping to add some motion. Let's take a listen to the whole section.
As the music progresses into the next section, I'm going to use both harmonic and orchestration changes to help develop the music further, while still retaining the overall feel set out in the first section. For the next set of piano chords, I've decided to play a C major chord at the beginning, instead of the C5 chord. This still doesn't root the music in the key of C major though, as the following chords are all still chords which are not found in the key of C major, apart from the F major at the end. These chords are similar from the previous opening section, with a few changes to help add to the harmonic development. I'm also going to use instrumentation to help move the music on from the previous section. As I brought in the pads Reverse Piano and Strings in the second half of the opening section, it makes sense to carry these on in this next bit. I'm going to have the strings playing something a little more elaborate though. I'm using violins playing sustain notes, which are outlining the right hand piano harmonies. The top note of each chord is forming a melody of sorts, which suits the violins well. After the first six bars of this section, I then have the violins play up an octave helping further to add to the depth of the sound as the music progresses. You can see that I've layered the violins using three separate sounds. The flat handos from Spitfire Audio's chamber strings, the sustained violins from 8DO's Adagio violins, and some sustained violins from Cinematic Studio strings, which all help to thicken the sound and give a richer texture. For extra impact, I also introduce a simple bass guitar part, which is generally playing the root or bottom note of each chord set out in the piano part in order to give a boost to the low end. Finally, I layer the mandolin with an acoustic guitar, again from the lab's range, just to help further in thickening the texture, in addition to this Omnisphere guitar sound. When composing, I'm always aiming for the music to morph and change as it progresses, and this can partly be achieved by increasing or decreasing the intensity. I've chosen to further build this piece going into the section, which will again be achieved using mostly instrumentation, but also with some rhythmic development in the piano. The chord changes are now slightly quicker, with the first of every two chords now changing every quarter note, instead of every dotted quarter note. Instrumentation wise, the violins in this next section now have additional high pedal notes of held C and Gs, helping to add to the depth. I've also introduced a shake pattern, which carries on to the end of the piece, giving a new element of sonic interest, along with the dulcimer pattern, is just playing constant Cs in eighth notes. After a short break, the mandolin, acoustic guitar, and omnisphere patch also come back in again, helping the music to build further. As I've mentioned before, I often like to end my pieces in the same manner as they began. Here I've done the same, copying the piano chords from the beginning and tagging them on to the end. I've carried on the shaker pattern from the previous section into the ending though, helping to add some cohesiveness between the two sections. So let's take a listen to the whole piece, this time with the notation.
there's a quick walkthrough of the piece. As previously mentioned, it's been inspired by composers such as Thomas Newman, not only in its harmony, but also in the instrumentation as well, particularly with the piano, strings, guitars and dulcimer. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more composing tutorials, tips and tricks.